everybody. Welcome to the Rob Review, your friend and success. Robert Morris here. Glad to have you as we talk about everything that involves turning your financial future into what you want it to be. Specifically, I like to talk about the stock market because I don't believe enough people really understand the power of paper assets and the fact that going back any chunk of time all the way back to basically 1900, maybe a little bit before, any consecutive 10-year period, I believe that the major, major, major money is made from paper assets in the stock market, regardless of what you or my wife and I have multiple, multiple talks about the, the, the betterment of stocks versus real estate, da, da, da. But I have started this show, and I have grown it into really specifically nailing down becoming a stock market CEO, which means a person that runs your investments in the stock market like a business. You, 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 you plan for what you want and you produce income from your assets in the stock market like a business. That's the goal of the show is to teach you not, not necessarily how to do it, but what I'm doing and what you can do and what's available to you that I don't think the general public really knows. There's so many things, including what we're going to talk about tonight, which is like an in-depth look at covered calls. So many of us start out our lives with very little financial education at all. We've talked about that before, the, the, the lack of financial education in schools. And that's not a diatribe that I want to get into tonight, but the beginnings of understanding what you can do with your stocks that you own in the market is understanding things like covered calls, the options that you have in options, if you will. Uh, the, the, the power of these strategies, when you take the cap off of it, when you realize that the risk there, though is there, is limited compared to your knowledge and your availability of time to earn back whatever you may lose, that's where I think we lose everyone, is that we steer them away from wanting to learn these strategies individually, to be able to individually know what we can do with our money. Because I believe you and I all have different goals with our investments, right? We all have individual lives that we want to lead differently. And so the products that are out there are not varied enough for you to be able to tailor it specifically to what you want. And you can never tailor anything to what you want if you don't know the possibilities, if you don't have all the possibilities in front of you. You know, it's like going to build a house with only a hammer. You need all your tools to be able to expertly build the foundation properly and layer on the other pieces of that house to have your financial mansion in the future. That's the way I look at it. And today we're talking in depth in the covered calls. Hopefully we can cover everything in one show, maybe not. Because I started off talking about dividends a couple of episodes ago. Actually, it's a three-part series, so as you watch this, it's going to be the last show you watched. And I realized that when I started to talk about dividend income and rolled into covered calls, I didn't go in-depth enough to speak on just you and me sitting talking about the possibilities, the things that I have learned to do, the things that you can learn to do, because once you get past the scariness of it, which is really built up in your mind because nobody's ever taught you this, if we were all taught in high school how to do these things, because all of us think about owning real estate, owning stocks when it comes to building wealth. Well, real estate has a lot of options for you to produce different cash flow pieces from it. Most people, when they're taught how to produce cash flow from stocks, they're only taught one or two ways. Dividends, buy and to sell. Buy and to hold, get the dividend, buy to sell, roll it over in your IRA. I believe that covered calls, you shouldn't be let out of high school without having done a basic understanding of here's what paper assets can do for you. And here's the different options that are on the table for you to use options to produce multiple streams of income from owning one block of shares in a company. That's, that's the bottom line of it. That's the bottom line of it. 
And I think that if we were all taught this from a younger age, say high school, the risk adverseness to things like options would be nil. Because that's what it's like when you first get in to drive a car when you're in high school. You go to driver's ed, they show you these very scary videos so that you won't go out there and do stupid things while you're behind the wheel. They scare you into being 10 and 2 and being very focused, which is smart. And you start out driving very focused and very scared to the point where your nerves get rattled at the littlest thing. It's the same thing, I believe, with the stock market. But we're not taught from a young age how to use a stock market like we are how to drive. And so we never get comfortable. Nowadays, you and I both do it. We drive to the same place every day or regularly enough that our brain turns off and goes on autopilot and we're in the clouds somewhere. You ever driven somewhere and you got there or you hit a light and all of a sudden you wake up and you're thinking, I don't remember how I got here. Your brain is on autopilot because you don't need to think about doing it. It becomes so automatic. It can do the same thing with stock market options, with understanding how to have like 100 shares of stock and building it over time, as we talked about in other episodes, to produce income from dividends. That same income can really, really be powerful when you start to couple it with not selling the stock for the profit because then you have to pay not only the taxes for the, from the proceeds, but you don't own the stock anymore. So covered costs, what is it? All right, let's talk in depth. I'm gonna walk off and we're gonna walk on to the next set and we're gonna get started with this. In depth, talking about covered calls. Now, I want to talk about this as if you and I were just like getting pizza and talking about what I'm doing with my money. And, and, and so I don't want to get all into all this lingo that they have and I really believe that's another weapon they, they, meaning the establishment, uses it against us so that we have to feel like we need somebody to help us understand the lingo of investing. So when you look up things like covered calls, here's the definition you get. This is a covered call. The term covered call refers to a financial transaction in which the investor selling the call options owns an equivalent amount of the underlying security. Translation, you can't write a covered call if you don't own the shares, okay? To execute this, an investor who holds a long position in an asset then writes or sells call options on the same asset to generate income, to generate an income stream. The investor's long-term position in the asset is the cover because it means you are covered as a seller to deliver the shares if the buyer exercises the right to that option. So that is the most basic definition I could find online. That comes from, I believe, in, in investor topia or something. All right, here's my definition. Covered call is some really, really cool tool that some person made up out there so that you could own shares in a company and still make money off those shares without having to sell the shares. That's what it is. That's the basis of a covered call. It is when I own, say, uh, 100 shares of Cat Tractor, and Cat Tractor is sitting there, and I want to make money on Cat Tractor as it's getting ready to go up, but I don't want to sell my stock. Well, I can write one contract of covered calls against that stock. Now, there are a whole lot of other pieces to that, but that's the basics of it. N doesn't sound too risky right now, right? It that's the, that's the beginnings of it. Now we step into the next piece. The next piece of it here is, let, I'm still learning how to get this stuff to work for me. I'm gonna walk over here and hit this button so we can go to the next slide here. All right, maximum profit, maximum loss. There we go, finally it works. This is the big definition. The maximum profit of a covered call is equivalent to the premium received from the options sold plus the potential upside in the stock between the current price and the strike price you're selling. All right, so if you've never done anything with options before, real basic lesson in it. 
all right, every stock is selling at a particular price, say Cat Tractor at $100 a share. There are going to be options listed below and above and at that current price. So $100 strike, $110 strike, $105 strike, $115 strike, and below the 100, you're going to have 95, 90, and so on. The above is out of the money. The below is in the money, and we'll get into that in a minute. And you've got the at the, the, at the money. Now, every single one of those prices has a bid and an ask to be able to do the transactions. So the, the bid is what you can sell something for. The ask is what you buy an option for. When you sell an option, the maximum profit is based around what everyone calls a premium. A premium is simply, let's go to the next slide here. An options writer can earn money by selling a covered call, but they lose the potential profits if the call goes into the money. However, da 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 da. All right, we'll go to the next one here. The premium is equal to the bid price. Now, the definition is the premium is approximately what you'll receive. The bid is the approximately what you'll receive in the options premium per share. Uh, up front when you sell the call. So nobody wants to come out and say it's exactly the bid, but usually this is what I get around the bid price of a stock. And so we're going to look at a um, an option spread here in a minute, an options chain, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. When you get ready to sell a covered call, you can sell whatever strike price you want to and basically plan on receiving the current bid times the amount of shares you have in the company. And you get that today. The market maker, the person that makes the markets out there, is agreeing to pay you the premium, i.e. the bid, for you agreeing to sell somebody else the right to buy that stock at X amount of price. Okay. So what we're really looking at here is the loss can be what? The loss can be as far as losing money in this. I'm going to talk about later. I don't really know how you can because I generally don't have a lot of problems with being exercised. I don't think but one time in my life I've been actually exercised when doing a covered call. But that's the maximum loss. The maximum profit is the premium. The maximum loss is if you've got cat tractor and you do it backwards or I mean there is no backwards way to do a covered call but in my opinion what I've been taught to do this would be the incorrect way to do it. If you've got cat tractor at $100 a share and you agree to sell the $90 calls and you get paid up front to do that well immediately you're giving somebody the right to buy cat tractor at 90 at which right now it's at 100 they will usually regularly decide to exercise that right then. And you have to sell them all of your shares that you have agreed to share to sell at the $90 price tag. And you had it at 100 Now, the loss there, obviously, is $10 a share, unless you're doing it the proper way, which would mean don't ever sell. I don't ever sell a covered call unless I have accumulated a profit in the position. So I bought cat for say 70 a share. Well, even though I'm it's risen to 100, I'm leaving up, you know, there's $30 per share profit, right? Well, I'm agreeing to sell something in 90 that's currently at 100. Well, I get the premium up front plus if I get exercised, I get to keep my $20 a share of profit. So if the premium is $5, I get $25 a share. Let's say I only had 100 shares. That's still $2,500 in total if I get exercise plus the premium, which was 500. So, you know, 2,000 plus the five, 2,500. That's the maximum profit. The loss would be if I had to sell at 100 or if I had to, had to sell at 90 what I bought for 100, I would lose $10 a share. And so I'd get to keep the premium, which was five, but I would have lost 10, so I'd be less $500. So that's where 
a lot of people see covered calls as risky because they're like, oh, no, I'll lose all my stock. Well, yeah, if you don't do it correctly. That's the catch-22 of this, all right? That's where you got to really think about, is it worth it to me? For myself, if you do it properly, it's always going to be worth it. Last episode, I talked about the power of sweeping the change, as Buffett talked about in s- many of his books. It's like a strategy where he basically sells covered calls on millions of shares, and he's only sweeping the change because the bid price is so small, it's like picking up change off the floor. But because he sells them out of the money, he gets to keep the premium, and the 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 option usually is not exercise and expires worthless and he keeps the premium. So here's a little hint for you on the next one. The option buyer or holder has the right to call the stock away from you at any time. You still keep the premium, obviously, and any capital gains, there you go, there's the capital gains piece, up to the strike price you decide to sell. But you could miss out on the dividend of the stock if it leaves your account before the payout date. All right, so... Think about that. That's really obvious when you think about it, but when people start to talk about risk, they want to make sure you know everything up front because they don't think you're smart enough to figure it out yourself. I think you are. If you have Cat Tractor and you agree to sell a covered call and it is um, March and they're paying out the dividend in April, usually, and here's the other piece of it, um, they usually will, if they're able to, exercise the option so that they can keep the money in their pocket from the dividend and you're not going to be able to get the dividend. But if you do it properly, even if you miss it on the dividend, you've got a nice profit and you've maybe made more than you would on your dividend. An example of that would be, all right, let's say I got a thousand shares of Cat Tractor at $200 $200 a share, okay? The dividend for CAT, the last time I got a dividend check, oh, man, I don't remember. Let's say it's $1.50, okay? $1.50 times 1,000 shares, you're getting 150 bucks. okay? Well, let's say you've got the uh, the 200 shares, I mean, the 1,000 the, the shares at $200, and it's getting ready to uh, really do nothing, but you sell the uh, the 210 calls, and you get paid $5 a share for doing that. Okay, up front you're getting 5,000, <coughs> excuse me, and the call is going to be sold, maybe let's say you sell two months out in time. It's not going to be anywhere near being exercised for two months. You've got cat at 200. You've agreed to sell it at 210. Okay, let's say you don't get exercised, it expires worthless in two months. You keep the 5,000 instead of the 150, all right? Or even if it's even more, still five grand up front, one month, a dividend check, four dividends a year one every four months. You can do both. You can swip or swap. It's a beautiful thing. Let's say you did get exercised. All right, well, now you've got to sell your cat at 210, what you own at 200. Maybe you already had a profit in it because we talked about only doing this when you had a profit. Let's say you bought it at 150. You're selling it at 210. That's a really decent profit times 1,000 shares plus the premium that you got. And then, if Cat Tractor goes up that much, excuse me, I just wait for it to go back down and take my profit and put it back into more Cat Tractor than I had in the first place. This will all. This is why I always sell covered calls into a stock profit or out of the money. All right, or uh, really both. All right, examples to come 
we're going to talk about these in a minute, but that's that's the difference, all right? So we talked about strike prices here before. Let's do some looking at an options chain. Oh, another hint. Not surprisingly, some option buyers will exercise. We talked about that. That buyer wants to make sure he gets all the profit he can, right? So if he knows that he can exercise and get the dividend, he's going to every time. So just don't give him the option. Don't put yourself in the situation if you're too worried about losing the dividend. I would say don't ever sell, and I've been told this, don't ever sell cover calls on a stock you're not willing to sell. I'm always willing to sell stock. It's not a family member. I don't have emotions attached to it. I don't care as long as I profit. I can always go back and buy more shares later. That's the way I look at it. All right, so when you sell a covered call, that's the next piece right here. When you sell a covered call, you receive the premium as money up front, otherwise known as the bid of the option. So here we're looking at uh, an option chain of QQQs. I just took a screenshot of today's current price. Let's say the Qs is trading at 425, all right? Yeah, thanks, Lee, I appreciate that. 425, so everything under it would be in the money, everything over it would be out of the money. And so we don't want to sell anything in the money because immediately we might get exercised even though we're selling way out in time, February 16th, that's three weeks from now as I'm recording this. And generally speaking, if you sell out of the money, which is you know 426, 427, 428, let's say we're going to sell the 428 <coughs> covered calls. You're going to get the bid price there of 618 a share times 1,000 shares. That's roughly 6,000 bucks. That ain't a bad payday. And here's the thing. So let's say Cat Tractor does rise to 425, 426, 427, 428, 4, 430. And at around February the 16th, your option gets exercised for 428 while the stock's at 430. Well, even if you only had $3 per share profit, you still get to keep that plus your premium. How do you lose? I don't know how you lose in this situation. I That's why Buffett does it. I don't know how he loses in this situation. You're talking about Buffett with his, I just read a, an article, all right, uh, Charlie Munger. He passed away recently. I was reading about his portfolio and how over these years, He's built up, you know, a lot of people see Buffett's portfolio and they see the, the, the billions he's accumulated and they think of Charlie Munger closely associated with that. But Charlie Munger has his own portfolio and it's accumulated in his lifetime. I think it was recently priced at like $300 million in this article. Let's say he had it all on one stock, which he doesn't. Let's say he had it all on three stocks, which he doesn't. All right, so 100 million shares of um, Coca-Cola, all right? I know Warren Buffett owns Coke. I own Pepsi, he owns Coke. I own Pepsi because I can never own as much Coke as he can uh, because he owns it, so I own Pepsi because eventually I'm going to own more than Warren. That's a kind of similar little goal of mine. All right, I've got to hurry this up. So he's got Coke at $40 a share. He's got a, um, uh, you know $100 million worth, which I don't even know if there's that much float out there. All right. Let's say it's $100 million worth at 40 a share. So let's say 40 million for easy math. So he owns um, 40, no, no, no. he owns a million shares, okay, at $40 a share. A million shares, he finds an option, say uh, $60 out of the money strike two months from now is the option he's selling. So it's at 40, he's selling the right to buy it at 60. He's getting a premium of $5 a share. Let's say he doesn't, let's say he gets a dollar a share. Let's say he gets a dollar a share for that, okay? Coke being the stock it is, probably isn't gonna rise that much in two months, but if it did, he got the dollar a share. How many shares? I said he owned a million shares. That's a million dollars up front. That's a decent day, I believe. And then if Coke 
did move that much, he would have to sell his Coke at $60, what he currently owned at 40 That's $20 million profit, plus the million, that's 21 And then he waits for Coke to fall back down and buy some more. Let's say it doesn't fall back down. I'll take the $21 million and buy something else. I mean, I... Yeah, I'm sure there's ways you can lose. That's why this is not financial advice. This is me doing what I do and covered calls. It's like my bread and butter, and I thank God every day that I was given a book called How to Get Started in Options when I worked at Firestone. I was, um, I somebody gave me a, a copy of this book. It was all torn up, and I sat in the break room after pulling tires around all day, and I read this book, and I thought, man, if I could just get $20,000 worth of stock and make 20% a month off of that, that's $4,000, I could totally replace my income here and never have to come to this factory again. Not downplaying the factory life. A lot of good people work there. We need tires. It's a good Harvey Firestone, good wholesome American building capitalism business. But I got tired of working the swing shift. I wanted to figure out how to get out. I, I believe this is a way. I just, I do. All right, um, moving on. Here's another bigger, you know, option chain that you can look at. You can see where the, uh, you got, this is what an option chain looks like. You got all the, uh, the times at which you can sell expiration dates, and you've got the bid and the ask of which you could sell a call, and if you want to buy a call, you got to buy it at the ask. All right, going on the next slide. The standard cover call method, churn, baby, churn, and burn. All right, I am going to just really quickly, no, come back to me. I'm going to really quickly just kind of hit these. All right, this is the standard way to do a covered call. You let it rise a little bit. Let's say you have a stock at 100. You'd see the chart set up. This is a little bit chart involved. You let it rise some to 110. It's still going to rise You've got your profit. You're going to sell a 120 call two months out in time, and you get the premium. And then you don't get exercised. Let's say two months now, the, uh, the stock has gone from 110 to 115, and then it dropped back down. Nobody wants to buy something higher than what it's currently worth, so it exercises not. It expires worthless. You get to keep the premium. Okay. Another way this could go is, of course, you do get called out. Two months from now, the stock's at 130. You get called out, I want your shares at 120. Okay, well, that's fine. I got the premium, plus I was already in profit at 110. You want a 120, I'm going to keep the $20 per share profit, too. All right, here's the fallen method. I talked about this before. It's, it's, it's a simple way to churn and burn money out of a stock that's continuing on the way down. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop this right here, Lee, if you want to get the outro ready. And I'm going to um, turn this into another session here, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight on the Rob Review. Thanks.